looking color. Yeah, they call it their metallic bronze. It's real pretty in the sun. Hmm. Buy me and get the gun free. I see it. It's definitely a different color. Do you know what's good about that? What's that? If that one's on here, that means that other one sold this week, so. <laughs> You about a toolbox selling machine, that's it for come, sure. Man, it comes in spells. Like there was a little while there, I didn't think I was able to sell a toolbox anymore, but <laughs> it comes in spells, so we take it. Uh, which is kind of the theme that we got set up on top there. Normally when you're selling, in my area at least, in other areas it may be different, but most of the time when you're selling a new box, you're selling it to a new tech, or selling it to somebody that's stepping up from a tire tech up to you know doing actual mechanic work or right. something like that so we've got some of the tools up top that are the most popular when you're going into doing a little more um, most of the time if they've got a roll cart they've already got a lot of the stuff it's just selling them mm -hmm. um, some stuff to make it easier and stuff that they may need so um, we uh, sold the white one Tuesday uh, and he had been in the mechanic world, but he still ended up buying some of the stuff that we had on top of it just because he didn't have it and didn't know what it would be needed for and stuff like that. So Cool. Uh, we do have the locking extensions. We've talked about them a couple of times, so mm -hmm. we do have those up there. Um, we've also got ease outs just because you're normally going to need them. It ain't something that you're going to want or need. We do have those. We're noticing that our... Uh, the more and more uh, bed bolts are going to needing stuff like that, mm -hmm. so we uh, we have those up. They're they're becoming more and more common. Uh, we've got a set of picks up there because everybody needs a set of picks, and I just yep. like the handles on these better. I do too. Yeah. Um, those are my favorite handles on picks. We do have the long sets too. We let the customers you know decide on which one they like best. Um, but something that I started putting up here that I normally didn't have up here because I never used it was one of these ignition coil testers yep. here. Um, I think it was your buddy that worked at a Ford place that mm -hmm. had brought it up. So we've, we've actually started telling people and that's made diagnosing some, some bad coals a lot easier um, as well. So we wanted to get that up there. And now, if you work on five four forwards, yeah. Every time you go dig your scanner out, you can take that right there and you've done figured out which one it yeah. is. Like and most of the time you can quick. hear it running pretty rough, so you can just go up there and that would just be a quick test. Man, to go, it's yep, just, this is because all you gotta do is touch it, the coal on yeah. that's, that's Which I'd heard, uh, and it makes sense. Somebody said that a regular um, one that you use is like at houses and stuff like that would work like a too. 110. I understand that, I, I'm sure it would, but you know, we've got this one all pretty packaged, so I put it up here. And then another thing is the gasket cleaners. Um, oh, yeah. We did a sale on buffers. I think it's in our area it, today or tomorrow, maybe the last day, but um, we sold the crap ton out of them and everybody was wanting the pad and stuff like that. And more and more, we talked about these, the more and more we sold them. So I've got it up there too, because everybody likes the long reach, be able yeah. to get in there. Well, look. Uh, in my opinion, a, a die grinder with a roll lock pad is the handiest thing yeah. you can have. You well, know. you can just about use it for anything. Yeah. Um, so we, we got it up there. Uh, of course, this ain't all the tools, and there's probably, you know, screwdriver and stuff like that. But like I said, most of the time, they've got a little bit of something. I do have the slotted uh, flathead up here just because I think that's cool how it holds it mm -hmm. in tight spots. Um, I, I do like that. I see you got some of the magnetic. Yeah, we ain't seen those in 23 years, Man, right? them things, that's the best socket organizers. If you guys want a socket organizer, this is the best one to make. Holds all your stuff, but these magnets, like all your weird stuff, like, you know, you're going to have those one-off sockets, you know, like on mine, I keep a couple of the universals that I yep. use all the time. And then I got a little bitty short locking extension that I use and all of that stays on those magnets and yeah because and you're, you're going to end up needing you're going to end up filling this up and then there's going to be those one or two things that normally you just lay down in here <laughs> yep and it's a pain to get them out when right you sockets in there. now now you can actually just put it here uh we've had these for a long time but they like i said they went missing uh, i know it wasn't 23 years we had them back last year but man what, it uh, seems like we could what's never... the part number on that because i know somebody's going to ask uh, and 
But these things are worth their weight in gold. It's gonna be MST22G. So from what I've been seeing, most of everybody that had them ordered have been only getting two. And that's all I got. But um, I don't know where I was in that line. So some of the distributors may not even get their two that they had ordered. But I know there was a crap ton ordered because when that first started happening, I had a bunch of people um, calling me and, and asking, you know, hey, my dealer says he's had it ordered now for six weeks. You know, is he just not getting it? No, I've, I've got them ordered too and right. I ain't got any. And, you know, we were, we were told a month, then we were told two months, then we were told we don't know. So it, we finally got it, and they just showed up. You know, that was a surprise. I, I saw one or two people had got theirs, and I, I was in my feelings about it. I was like, damn it, I've had mine ordered too. <laughs> and then I get home yesterday, and they're there. So I was pretty excited about that. And, and my back order list is steadily um, decreasing. Down. So, you know, that gives me some hope. Now, it could turn around a day. Right. But I can't tell you the last time I was able to look at the top shelf and see that many redbacks up there. Oh, yeah. So I don't have every size, but there's just a few. I think like if I had a nine and a nine and a half, I would have it pretty much. Yeah, and probably an eleven. I have. You need some string lights, man. Man, I tell you, I bought those on deal, so um, I, I bought a crap ton of them. So sure much. You know, I went through that spell last year to where I didn't have no flashlights, and there was like a flashlight shortage. Uh, and I decided at Expo when I saw there was flashlights on the table that I wasn't gonna be in a flashlight shortage this year. Well, these right here is one of my favorite lights that, that y'all have. Yeah, that blue in there is actually um, a little different. I think it's got the uh, UV light on it. Now the other ones back here are just the. Uh, you remember when they did the pink ones? I had you order mm -hmm. me a pink one like that. Yeah. Well, that's I what Shia keeps in her vehicle. Yep. And then I've got an orange one, and then that pink one. So the blue ones are different, huh? Yeah, the blue ones actually got a UV light. It's got the Cobb flood light on it, but it's got a UV light too. Um, so, I mean, it is different, which I still got the neck lights and stuff. I bought a bunch of neck lights too, but that's all I've got left. My goal with the flashlights was let's buy them on deal so we A, we don't run out, but also all year long I can offer deals on flashlights. Yeah. What's the difference in the price between the one with the UV and the one? Because I just, just want it because it's blue. <laughs> Let me just go look and see. Uh, which. Like I need that thing about like I need the coronavirus, but it's blue. And that's my favorite style. Well. Flat kind of line. I like, I just like them little lights. I, I like the, the, how small they are and the easeability of using them. Um, I know that kind of sounds stupid, but. Let's see here. And they last a pretty good while. Yeah, well, and now day and time, if your flashlight goes dead in 10 minutes, do you really even have a flashlight? That's true. So. You know, them things is tough too. Bill had one of them. And when his would run down, cause they don't have a battery indicator on them, or oh, at least yeah. the first ones didn't that he had. Man, he would sling that thing across the shop. There's no telling how many times that light got thrown all the way across the shop. Well, and I never threw, there's about $65 difference in them. These normally run around 84, uh, and I guess this one with the UV light built in, they, they value it a little more. Um, they put it at 148, so. Ooh, yeah, yeah, it's a little, it's a little more. Um, but now, like I said, I bought it on deal, so I'm sure I could do better than that, but uh, I don't even have my phone hooked up. But I, I man, when they went to them, uh, them lithium batteries they started doing that on a lot of stuff tools and stuff like especially when they first started putting them in your electronic tools and stuff they would just go dead all at once like it was mm -hmm. drilling at full speed and then just stop stop and yeah. you're like well, what well now they've got battery indicators mm -hmm. on them so you know to check it every once in a while yeah it don't bother me if i know it's gonna go dead like because you're expecting it yeah. but when you don't know it it's always when you're in a bad spot and you like I don't need it to go dead right now. Yeah, know? well, and, and I feel like that's why everything's starting to have the indicator on it, because like I said, when when Milwaukee and, and Maco and even Snap-on, I think Snap-on, uh, I had the 14-4 four, or 14-something, the little rocker style switch. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't have a, uh, it, it had a little flashing light there, but it went almost from red to 
green or green to red that seemed like just all, almost automatic or I yeah. just didn't pay attention. I don't know. It was just that little small light. And that thing was always working really good in this stop. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but, I mean, it was what it was. Like mine, when I noticed it starting to change, you know, because it'll go from like green to orange to red, I think is how it is. But when I notice that joker's on orange, I go ahead and switch it out. Cause... See, I guess I just never paid attention because I never, but again, it was it was so small, like oh, the mm -hmm. Michael guy's talking about a snap on right here, but it was so small, I liked it because I could get it in a really yeah. tight spot. That's why I love the stubby so much mm -hmm. because it gives me the versatility to get where normally I can't with a bigger impact. I know the bigger impact has usually got more torque, but that thing was a hoss, and anybody yeah. that says it wasn't is lying. But well, anyway, anybody that says that like, it don't matter if you're a Snap-on guy or Matco guy or whatever. If a tool's good, it's good. It don't matter what brand. Well, it see, is, and, you know? and and that's that's the thing with me. Um, I love tools. Period. I'm mm -hmm. a tool fanatic. So when I see other companies come out with tools, it's like, that come it. Yeah. Why don't we did that first? You know. <laughs> and I try to get in somebody's ear right away because you know I like tools, and I've always done that. But um, well, y'all did do that first on some things. I, uh, I know, but hmm. uh, let's see what I can do this. <laughs> I can probably get the light down to 120. Um, so it ain't, it's not just a whole old lot off, but it's better than 148. But, right. Yeah, and and that's and I still pay attention to because um, I've done construction and stuff before too. I still pay attention to a lot of those. Mm -hmm. I'm still really interested in the. Uh, skill saws that can stop when it feels flesh like yeah. i still haven't figured that out quite yet i haven't did a lot of research on it but they say it you know it's called stall saw stop or whatever yeah i mean it ruins the blade and all that yeah it breaks everybody something, talks yeah. about oh it ruins it have you ever thought what that emergency room bill is going to cost well i was lucky enough not to go to the emergency room but i guess i was about 10 11 12 and on both sides of my family i i made did a lot of construction, um, not really professionally, but they, I guess that was just something older men did. Like everybody had a workshop. Mm -hmm. um, but, and one actually did a lot of it publicly, but um, so I was out in his shop one day and he was inside, of course, I'd been in it with him several times. So he just, yeah, go out there and do what you wanna do. You know, it's a different time now. Now you have to keep an eye on everything even with a phone, you got to watch what they're doing. But back then, they just let me, you know, do what I wanted to do. And I was cutting cedar, and I don't, still don't know how I did it. But you know, cedar's red anyway. I noticed some of it had like really bright red stains on it. I'm like, well, that's kind of cool. What is that? You know, is it bleeding? I don't, ten or eleven years old. I don't know. Well, it wasn't bleeding. I was. <laughs> I had somehow had run my thumb up in it, and it had cut. Um, I'd say about a little over an eighth inch into my nail here, and it was just pouring. Talk, I didn't feel it. That's how, mm -hmm. and you know when you get cuts that oh, yeah. that way, and it's so quick that you don't even feel it. Man, it was it was blood everywhere, and I wasn't even paying attention. And I remember walking home with it wrapped up in my shirt, uh, and my one of my family members was actually going to her house, and she was a nurse, so she stopped and asked me what happened. But anyways, I didn't I didn't even get sick to my stomach until I had realized. I what I had done, done but yeah. I'd much rather have ruined a blade than because that was sore for six months. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it took. I didn't go to the emergency room with it, but you know, it, I know my little emergency room visit. I almost cut my finger off. It was uh, right at seven grand. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm like okay. you, you, you can find a lot of saw blades or whatever's in that thing. Probably it's probably way less than seven grand. Well. Not to mention the downtime after the fact, yeah. you know. And, and I was, somebody's going to say that, that I wasn't doing it right. I know that. I yeah. know that I was doing something I mean, something you was stupid. a kid, too. You yeah, know I mean, <laughs> I know I was doing something wrong. It wasn't One thing I fault. bet, though, you haven't done it since then. Oh, I have not. Because you learned that lesson Oh, at, at you that bet. Point, so. uh, well, I had cut, where I'd messed up is I had cut cedar with my other grandpa had uh, electric chainsaw and he let me cut some cedar down and what I was going to do is I was going to rip it and make boards mm -hmm. uh, 
I, I don't know why I was going to do it, but I was going to build something out of it. And I guess just not paying attention, I wasn't using anything, the, no the push actual stick. pusher, yeah. you know. Uh, I've seen the one that comes with a saw, I've seen them do it with two befores, one befores, whatever's laying in the shop, screwdriver. But I, evidently, uh, too young to be doing it, but I mean, either way, I know why it was at fault. It wasn't mm -hmm. the saw's fault. Uh, but still, it'd been nice to have, which, I mean, I think they... I don't think they cost ungodly to replace that. I think it's like yeah. a, you know, if even if it's a hundred bucks, like you said, seven thousand dollars. If it's five hundred bucks, because yeah. like the real money when you get hurt like that yeah. is not the emergency room bill. It's the three weeks or four weeks till you get back to where you can work again. That's yeah. where the money. Because like luckily for me, you know, it happened on like a Thursday. Yeah. And then I had the weekend and I actually worked with it. Now it looked terrible. Like I had grease all over the bandage and everybody's like, oh man, you're going to end up with some kind of crap. But I had to work cause I, yeah. but it took me so much longer to get crap done. I probably could have done in a day healthy what it took me in three days because of my hand, you know? Well, and yeah. And I can tell you that my grandpa had me out there the next day cutting again, just to keep the fear away, mm -hmm. you know, but Either way, even that's, one. That's a lot of things in the South. People do that down yeah. here, you know. Like you I make, mean, right you, after you I make done them it, go back. You know? I, I, right after I done it, I thought they were going to be furious. I thought my dad was going to be mad. I thought he was going to be mad. And I'll never forget. He said, "I." He said, "Call Tim, which is my dad, and tell him that Michael cut his hand." I said, "Don't call him. Uh, he'll be mad." And I'll never forget. He said, "He better not. I'll whoop his ass." And I said. <laughs> well, you know, and my dad wasn't mad, yeah. you know, he, he come down and made sure I was okay. Um, but I mean, immediately after it happened, it wasn't, you know, uh, we're getting on to you. It's like, all right, well, how did it happen? I don't we're know. We're going to show you the right well, way to well, do it. When you get to feeling a little better, we're going to show you what, you know, what not to do. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, so it is what it is. But I mean, even in when I took um, building trades up in high school, mm -hmm. I mean, to watch some of those kids, and I was a kid then too, but to watch some of them just not because some of those people just take it to get out of taking another class. Yeah, yeah. And That's you're watching the way them, auto mechanics was too. You yeah, know, you're watching them to cut some of these boards and stuff. And there's one instructor to 20 kids. I mean, mm -hmm. that needs to be in every school that's teaching building trades because. Mm -hmm. I mean, I watched a kid break his hand on a drill press because of what he was drilling. It, yeah. The chuck got caught and it was a chain and it wrapped around his hand and broke his hand. And I mean, it wasn't the instructor's fault. He had done told him, mm -hmm. keep that away, do this. But of course, yeah. we know best. But either way, we got kind of off. But I wish they would bring back Votech. Like I think every high school boy should take some type of Votech. Well, that leads if they me. don't have anything but basic mechanic, basic homeowner, like maybe put it all into one thing. Like, okay, we're going to show you how to change a light switch and a receptacle in your house, how to, you know, put a faucet in or a yeah. toilet float, or we're going to teach you how to do brake jobs, change your oil, and rotate well, your tires. You know, you know all of that, that needs to be in a course. And, and we can lead that back into the automotive world. But with that, I actually ended up taking Building Trades 1, and by the third week in it, they told me, hey, we're going to put you in Building Trades 2. But there was people actually having to learn this is a hammer, mm -hmm. this is a screwdriver. Well, when I took Metal Trades, we had to take a test. Yeah. And they would have pictures of tools. Well, see, we did And that. I'm like, what are we in, like, third grade? But I didn't realize I had grown up. Yeah. Around all that stuff my entire life. And you take that for granted, you well, know. Well, see, and I did. I took that for granted. Because we went in there, and the first couple of weeks, I'm like, I'm just going to quit this class. If this is this dumbed down, I, I you know, yeah. what That's is the this? Same way it's I a was. hammer. So but we you know, when I was doing some repair videos, I would break it down super simple for like the person that worked at. I don't know, Kmart, you know, and, and, and didn't know how to do well, it. And that's important. And I learned that because after we took that test that you're talking about, because we did it, mm -hmm. I went to the instructor and I said, look, I'm dropping this class. It's not what I thought it would be. He's like, hold up. He's like, no, 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 no. I see second, second year got to build the, the sheds mm -hmm. and the stuff. And he said, I'm putting you with them. And then the next year I took another one, but leading back into the automotive world in the last three weeks, I have got calls 
and it's family, some of it's family, some of it's friends, grown men that don't know how to change a battery. You know, and you you think that not you know changing a battery is pretty well, we simple. We take that for granted. Yeah, you know? and and I've got I, I don't I don't know how to say this because I don't want to reveal who it is, but there is certain people in this world right now in younger generations that don't know how to do absolutely anything with a car but to yep. drive it, and and You're that's right. happened to me more and more as I've got older. And I've told, I've said it to myself, and it's to a point now that I feel bad because there's mm -hmm. going to be a full generation of people who, which it's going to only make the shops busier because if you can't, if you can't change a battery or name washer fluid, and you know this one instance, I asked the person. They said their battery, but their car was not cranking. I told them to go get the battery tested. When I get over there to put the battery back on, because they said they couldn't do it. They had took like 12 things off that they didn't need to. They had the cable, um, they had took the nut all the way off. So the bolt had come out. They had lost the nut. We all know you're not supposed to take it all the way mm -hmm. off. You just loosen it, take a screwdriver, kind of do that, and you're good to go. Yeah. But they didn't know that. So I was trying, they're, they're fisting to get married. And so I was like, look, you need to learn some of this or you're, you're going to spend a fortune mm -hmm. getting simple stuff done. I said, do you know anything underneath here? Yeah, I know it. And that's another problem, saying you know something that you don't. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, well, what's that? Oh, well, that's the transmission fluid. No, that's the wiper fluid. You know, what's this? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the brake fluid. No, that's the transmission fluid. Yeah. You know, well, what's this? Oh, well, that's the oil. No, that's the brake fluid. You know, and this is a real life. And the fact about it is he thought he knew it all. Well, see, I had a kid, <clears throat> it's one of my friend's son, He's like, hey, can I come up there and you help me put wiper blades on my truck? I was like, sure. And then when he gets up here, he goes, man, I hate to ask you, but I ain't got any tools to do this. I was like, okay. I said, I'll show you how to do it. I'll do one side, you do one side. Yeah. So I showed him how to do the driver's side. Because, you know, I was like, he'll watch me do this. And he's like, what tools do I need? I said, you don't have to have any tools. I can just mash a little button on the wiper blade and it slides right out. But man, it was such a struggle to watch that fella, after me showing him how to do the driver's yeah. side, to watch him do the passenger. I don't know if it was because it was flipped. Yeah. Maybe that was a I don't know because struggle. I, I'll, or I'll, I think it was because he spent his whole life sitting behind a video game and what? never had to, the struggle like we did, go out and try to crank the lawnmower while it won't crank. Well, yeah. okay, has it got gas in it? Okay, it's got gas in it, so what's the next step? Is it got spark? Yeah. You know, is the plug good? Like, you know, all of these air. steps. How's, is it getting any air? Is it full of mud? You know, or, wait a minute, all these things are good. Why is it still not cranking? And then you check the little safety switch under yeah. the seat. Well, of course, that's bad. So you tie the wires together. Tie the wires right? together. Even like, on a dryer. If it's not working, Kids don't tie have together. to do that now. Like, well, they don't, they never. And I think we, as parents, have failed. We have because we want their life to be better. We don't want them to have to do that kind of stuff. So we struggle to buy newer, better, say, lawnmowers or, yeah. or whatever the case is, so they don't have to work on them. And we're not doing anything but straining our kids. Well, and, and, and I'm currently doing that myself because I don't care to show nobody. I, I really do not care to, to show anybody anything. Like, if you come up to me and say, I don't know how to do it, and I know mm -hmm. how to do it, I'll show you. Yeah. I'll even let you do it. But where I get impatient is when I'm showing you and you're looking at your phone. That's what I was going to say. All... Like, I've had so many people come up here. Will you help me put brakes on my car? Abs I don't know how to do it. Will you show me? Absolutely, man. Yeah. Not a problem. They get up here. They want to sit on a stool and be on Instagram or Facebook while you do the work. I'm like, hey, do you want to watch me do this? You want yeah. to learn? Because you said you want me to show you. You can't see what I'm doing. Like, I can record a YouTube video and you can watch it later if that's what you want yeah. to do. Well, and, and that's the thing. I don't care to show nobody and I'm impatient. So if if I am if I have showed you how to do it or I have told you how to do it and you're still not doing it, I'm more likely just going to take it away from you, finish it up <laughs> to get it over you with. Do it. Just hurry up and get it done. Nothing drives me crazier <laughs> yeah. than, and, and my oldest daughter is the worst about it. Uh, if she watches this, I'm sorry. But if I tell you how to do something step by step, or if I show you how to do it, 
and then 10 minutes later I ask you to do it and you try to do it different or you skip 12 steps that's going to make me <laughs> yeah. so mad that I'm going to say screw it like there's no sense in, and the excuse yeah. I don't know how drives me crazy so um, I always thought my parents were mean because they made me work yeah you know like and, and as a kid you think that like, right but after I got bigger um you know we've got some family in Chicago and I love them to death but their mentality is like I would go up there to visit my grandmother she'd be like well this switch is out my bathroom I can put that in baby you ain't but 10 like I got this I, like, got I this. know how to do it yep. my uncle was like no you need to call an electrician that's electric work you got to call an electrician so we'd go to Walmart, Walmart, and buy an 84 cent switch. I'd go back, <laughs> stick it in, and boom, our lights working I, again. I think there's still that much there too. I don't think you they've know, ever went up on that and stuff. They didn't know how to do that. You know, like they, he was going to call a carpenter to, to replace a, a section of of like the dog ear wooden yeah. fence because it's wood and you have to have a carpenter. I'm like, no, dude, we can do this like straight up. They sell this at Home Depot. Like yeah. I'm like 13 year old Nails, teaching screws, a 50 something. year old. That's it. I'm like, hmm, maybe my parents wouldn't be in jackasses. Maybe well, see, they was doing something called preparing me for life. And I don't know if that was <laughs> just in the South or what, but I can't tell you how many, um, my mom's dad, which I called him Papa, but um, he, took me to so many different places and at 10 12 you know hey I've, I've done did all the wiring just put the electrical switches in yep. you know and yeah he would go back and check me but mm -hmm. i could tell you that well as a kid it's really easy like okay white goes to silver black goes to gold green goes to green right yeah and then or copper goes to green yeah and there would be times that you know you would have to you have a two-way switch or something and mm -hmm. i'd be like hmm and he, and he would sit down and he'd draw a diagram but not only would he draw a diagram he would tell me why and right. the next time i knew he knew mm -hmm. i knew he drew a diagram but i better remember that because he's gonna say well, did you not do you not remember not how you did that one? i don't judge you how to do that but once. you know and yeah. the, the thing about it was <laughs> even in the car world you know that's why i tell people all the time electric's my favorite there's no hiding an electrical mm -hmm. issue like i know you think that there's some that's hidden but there's not either this object is doing what it's told to do or yeah. it's not and if it's not if it's getting the voltage to it but it's not giving it out well mm -hmm. there's your issue like that's why i love electrical there's i enjoy doing electrical too because it it makes you think a little bit and ain't just man i i can look at a wiring diagram and that is my that is my safe zone that's when i feel the most relaxed okay and this goes here this mm -hmm. goes here and i know there's more complex than that and hybrids and stuff like that it does get a little bit more but i have fun with that but the main the thing, the part that sucks about electrical is just getting to it most of the time. I'm gonna tell you what I hate the most about the mechanic world. Period is when you tell somebody something and they argue with you. That gets on my nerves. Like <laughs> I hate that more than anything. And that happens every time I try to help somebody. Yeah. Well, it's this. No, I don't know. Well, so and so did this, and well, so and so thinks this. Well, why is it not at so and so's house? Or why did so and so shop not fix it? Like that used to drive me nuts when an electrical issue would come in or a mechanical issue, either one, and it would be labeled as a trouble vehicle. You know, it's, you know, it's doomed. You know, we've done spent this much money, and you go up there and you tell them, hey, you need a ten dollar relay. There's no way. So and so yeah. says the ECM's bad. I need the ECM. Well, the ECM's. Fifteen hundred dollars. I can throw that at it, but when it ain't it, I don't want you screaming at me and yelling that you want. So why don't we try free. this ten dollar relay first? Well, you know, and that was the thing. Most of the time, if it was something stupid like that, I worked at a dealership. We could go get parts off brand new cars. Mm -hmm. I mean, ECMs, BCMs, TCMs. It didn't matter, especially at a dealership. A lot of times, you're working on newer stuff. At least where I work, you're mm -hmm. working on newer stuff. You know, if I if I did that problem, but that's also why so many people couldn't do electrical around because they just go get a new part just yep. throw it on there well if i didn't fix it let me go get yep. another one try something else you know so i to all the younger techs or the people that's working at their home or whatever because i know a lot of people that comment on the videos uh because i do read the comments i know a lot of times it's well i don't i don't work at a shop but i do it at home just take your time think about it and and especially on electrical just follow what the wiring diagram says. It tells you where it's I mean, supposed to be. Anytime you can Google 
1999 Toyota Camry yeah. wiring diagram and pull it up for free? Like, do Just that. take you a couple like, of different highlighters. Yeah, what go. I used to do is I'd take a highlighter, and if it was a power wire, I'd do it in yellow, and if it was a ground, I'd either have an orange or something. Mm -hmm. Or if you're speaking of Toyota, all my Toyota techs know Earth. Um, if you're working on a Toyota and they say Earth, that means ground. But um, just trace it, and do you got it there? And, yeah. and be careful with these power probes and stuff. I know there's a couple people that always come on the video, you know, talk more about tools. Well, we try to, but on them power probes, don't just shoot power to it if you don't know power oh, goes absolutely. to it. Absolutely. Like, like I think the the best thing is the test lights, like you guys have got that you can hook it up, and it shows you power and ground. You know, it's green yeah. for ground, red for power, or whatever. I've got. It tells one of you those. the voltage. Like those are the best things to use if you're not sure of, you know. And a lot of times, this like right that's here kind of what I grab. That's it. This is it. Um, it'll be red for the positive, and the negative here will be the ground or earth. Um, and I think yeah, it's green. It's green, yeah. Yeah, that's the same one I have. So, and that's important. And and this banana clip right here, people don't throw that away. <laughs> that's in there for a reason. Yeah. And I didn't realize until I've sold <clears throat> probably 1,500 of these in a year that most of my techs don't know what this is for. And we've had to, we've had to educate some people um, because they think that this is sharpened so that it goes in the back of connectors. Yeah. That's not, or the front of connectors. That's what drives me the worst. Like, I can almost stomach it when you do it to the back of the connector because mm -hmm. I'm like, thank God he's not spreading the pin out. But when you shove that in the front of the connector, I, yeah, it I, it's taken it all I have not to just slap you. And I, it's not mm -hmm. my fault, but you know, I've had to work on so many where that was the issue. Like they were at the problem and they spread that connector out and there, you know, there's the problem again. Um, so use this and then get your little um, probe kits, little probe kits yeah. and use them. And, and we sell some good kits for that. Mm -hmm. um, because what you end up doing is you end up spreading that terminal so much that it doesn't hit the contacts and then you're that never... one um that i got from you is my favorite probe kit it's like an aluminum box with yep. a clear top with all the different i don't think that i have one right the now best. um but yeah i, I like sell those something in there don't fit you have got a food barred situation that you're working on and it's probably you're probably not gonna be able to fix it at that point. Yeah. If the well, and, and that's the need. thing that I was talking about. This is great when you're checking for power and ground and everything's there. That's really quick and simple. But the, I really like the the power probe too, because it'll tell you power and ground. But also, when I'm using my power probe, yeah, I'll check everything. But but, but before I hit that button and I send power, mm -hmm. I've already looked at a wiring diagram and I know no, this. Fair, and I've yeah. done look. Not only did I look at the color of wire because folks the wire changes color most of the time mm -hmm. I, i'm not gonna say every time but by the time it gets to the headlight to the tail light it's changed at some point it's changed colors mm -hmm. on you and your wiring diagram will show you that it'll show you your connector number and it'll show you your pin Look my most that. time that i use a power probe is to test the component exactly. before replacing it. Like, all right, I know I've got 12 volts I've going done, to this blower motor. <laughs> I know I've got ground going to this blower motor. Now, I don't know if it's my switch. I don't know if it's the wiring from the switch to the blowing motor, or is it the blower motor itself? So I will unplug it. I will take my power probe and I will shoot juice to it. If it makes a racket, guess what? Yep. I know it's either from the wiring to the switch or the switch at that point. Yeah, you know? and I see it a lot. I see a lot of, or I used to see it, I don't know more, but I used to see a lot of computers get burned up, um, BCMs and stuff mm -hmm. get burned up because the window wouldn't roll up. So what do they do? They're trying to determine is it the switch or is it the motor? They shove it right in the back of the connector and they give it Hit power. The button, yeah. And guess what? It was the wrong wire and Just now you've sent it. that to the BCM and now you've smoked it. Mm -hmm. Like you could have simply unplugged that connector, gave your power to it. Well, how many people have done it with a drill battery? Exactly. I have, yeah. before I even knew what a power probe was. Mm -hmm. um, Just but, get those little alligator clips. and yeah. yeah, but it is safe to say that another issue that you, why you want to use one of these first or even the power probe, you can use it. 
because sometimes computers short internally, and when they do, you're sending ground mm -hmm. to, or it's sending ground to a power circuit, and you yeah. think, well, it's already messed up. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, you finna get it worse. <laughs> you, when you when you go to give that power, you're gonna cause a adverse reaction, and it yeah. may burn up the motor at this point, or it may have burned up something else. Connector, something. You know, yeah. but so I guess we we chose electrical real strong this time, but I mean. <laughs> It's, I guess it just all goes back into that, people not knowing really what to do. Uh, if you're wanting to learn, learn it. Like one of my favorite things with a power probe, and I know they make a fancy test box to do trailer wiring with, Yeah. But nine times out of 10, a guy will drop his trailer and be like, hey, I got a wiring issue, not sure what's going on back here, blah, blah, blah. So you got two options at the point, and he leaves with the truck, you know, so you're sitting here with a trailer, so you can buy one of those fancy breakout box with a battery in it, or yep. you can go out there with a power probe, and I always start at the back, because most of the time it's going to be the connector going to the trailer light plugs on, on yep. a big truck. I start there, okay, the light works, then I just move up. Like, I may go all the way to the front of the truck and hit it with power, you know, and okay. Now then, let's look at the back of the plug next, you know. I'm going to show you. Something. And I have had a lot of times that I would check it and be like, dude, there ain't nothing wrong with your trailer. Your issue is going to be your power cord on your truck side. Right. I'm going to show you a kit that drives me crazy. And I, and I know somebody's going to be mad at me when I say this. And it may be even you. But I hate this kit with a passion. And it's not... It's not because of the kit, it's because of people how, the, and, and I know it's made to use like that. But this little green thing here, and this little oh, yellow wire things, piercing. I absolutely freaking hate those. <laughs> At this point, just take that freaking test lot that we just showed and stab the wire. You're doing the same thing, but not only yeah. that, you're opening up for corrosion. I know that's what that's made for. I always, everybody is about that and I'm bad about doing it but I use liquid electrical tape if when you I'm do done. something like that if you use sil I've seen people do silicone which okay I understand it seals it but it may fall off but if, if you're gonna seal it back up I'm perfectly fine with it and say I'm and I'm a messy like sloppy guy when it comes to liquid electrical tape I will put that crap thick and I'll go all the way around I'm fine it. with that but you know but, when I started this I said it's not really the kit Mm -hmm. But these two things, that's what I'm talking about. Because yeah. nobody, do, almost nobody does that. If you're going to pierce that wire, Gotta cut seal it, it back. back. Up. Yeah. I mean, I don't if care. If not, that green crusties will get in there and it'll run each way on that wire. <laughs> and see, that drives me crazy. And that's why I hate selling this kit. Because 90% of the time when I ask the tech, what are you going to do What gonna you, do you with want that? to do is sell the kit and then sell them a bottle of liquid electrical tape to go with it. I, you know, I would honestly try that, and I may do that, <laughs> but when I, that when I question tape, them... That li 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 liquid electrical tape is the best thing ever made. I love that stuff. And, and I get why love you do it. that. Let me just, let me do, I know somebody's going to say, well, you do that because I understand why you do that. You do that because you tested here, mm -hmm. and it didn't have power, but you're testing here, and it did, so you're trying to see the break. Yeah. I totally understand that, and I agree. But when we fix the break or whatever, or maybe, maybe it's- You have to bypass it maybe. Yeah, you know? maybe, maybe it's not break. Maybe we realize that on down in this wiring harness that we thought was one single wire when we look at our wiring diagram, guess what? It's not, it goes into something or something mm -hmm. like that. A hidden connector that we didn't know about. Because if, yeah, if, I mean, if the harness is this long, you know it, that wire's bad anyway, pierce it, don't matter, right? At that point, why are you even piercing it? It's just that long, but either way, most of the time when you're doing that, you just know from here to here, and you don't know if there's another connector, so you're trying to see where it stops. Because right. sometimes I have run into cases to where they have wrapped those things up in black tape in the connector harness, the connectors, and it's just like a hidden harness. Mm -hmm. Or what about the times, I think Grounds is real bad about this too, they'll have like that, um, I'm gonna get hammered for not knowing the name, but they'll have that ground terminal inside of it where it's just a bunch of ground wires going in. And it's yeah, like a splitter. Yeah, right. Like, well, you know, you're thinking that the ground from here to here, you're testing. I'm, you know, it, why is it not a steady, mm -hmm. you're using your own meter and it's not there. What's going on? Um, yeah, you're, you're probing that wire and you, you get, you find out this, you know, whatever, just use the electrical tape. I mean, I'm not really mad at the kit. I'm just mad at the people that don't Man, I can't tell you how many times corrosion's come back to bite me. That comes back to being lazy, is what that comes back And there's to. so much laziness. I cannot stand when somebody does a job and don't put it back like it goes. Mm -hmm. 
like if it come into me and 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 i was terrible my poor service advisors that used to have to put up with me but they would come to me and tell me that the customer was throwing a fit that they don't think it's right and my first reaction would be like, well, tell them to take it back to whoever did this hack of a job in the first place. Because A, half the, the clips are broke. Like, yeah. if you can't take a clip tool and, and at least try. I know some, some of them's going to break. I know I mean, some's going to break. But if you if you can't just give it a try, but you can tell when the wire's just been pulled mm -hmm. or if they've tried to do it. If they've tried to do it, that's fine. I'll figure out how to fix it. But just to lay the harness in the wrong place. I've seen them laying over exhaust manifolds. I mean, it's it's just, get you, if you're gonna do wiring, get you a good deep pinning kit, get you some of the uh, connector kits. The the kit that you were talking about, uh, I believe it's gonna be the 54 piece. That's the one I usually mm -hmm. carry. Uh, they've got an MD146 and an MD149. Uh, Y'all check that kit out. I mean, that's the kit. Yeah, I agree good, with Clay. That's a that's kit. a kit. Uh, and then they're also going to have um, your different your probes and stuff like that. And then that little twelve volt um, that plugs in the cigarette lighter that's got the the Absolutely. positive in the ground. That's the best thing. And go ahead and spend the money and buy one of those retractable lead sets. Retractable lead sets. Yes. <clears throat> that's. But, also, I'm, I don't know if you got one of them up here or not, but the those, retractable lead set. No, the little uh, twelve volt. If thing. I did, it would be. Them things don't stay long. Man, them things are worth their money. Um, right there's one. Yes, guys, get, if you're doing electrical work, this is the best thing on earth to have right here. It's a M three two one five zero. You got power, you got ground, guaranteed, and you can clip your lead sets on it and have power and ground. Yes. It's, it's amazing. So we've talked about a lot of electrical. I'm gonna throw out just a couple more. I know the video is kind of lengthy, but I think you're getting a bunch of good information. Um, also, when you're doing that, if you're doing a lot, go ahead and buy you a good relay tester. Mm -hmm. I know that the normal See, I got hammered. I think it was like two or three weeks ago. I did a little video and I showed the Matco relay tester where we was using it on um, a headlight or something. Some guys like I wouldn't spend the money on a relay tester. I just put another relay in it. Okay, when the when the bill's done, when something's wrong and it blows the relay, then you've blown a twenty five thirty dollar relay. Right. Even if it's a ten dollar relay, you still blowed it, right? Yeah. Well. Well, your kit, if you flip the switch and something's wrong, it cuts it off. Like, yeah. You don't tear up nothing. Well, and I and. But also, let me tell you about that, because what a lot of people do is they'll start pulling relays and swapping. Let me yep. tell you where this screws you over. A, I have seen so many times when you're doing it with freaking fuses that you forget where the fuse goes and you put it in one of the empty spots, and guess what? <laughs> yeah. Now you're towing it into me because it's not cranking. Exactly. But also, people, when you take these relays out, the correct way is not to grab the biggest pair of pliers that you've got. And yank them out. And yep. yank them out. Because if it's not bad, <laughs> you just made it bad. Because you just cracked that casing. Yeah. And smearing that thing with silicone is not going to work for long. And it dang sure ain't going to work when you go to the extent of filling the internal. I had that before. I've had where it was broke so bad, we, they just took silicone and just squirted it inside of it and just, you know, come out. Well, guess what didn't work then? The silicone, mm -hmm. the the relay, but Contacts guess, guess what it also full did? Of silicone now. It burnt the freaking fuse block up. Because you know why? Because when that silicone pushed over, it kept that relay on, and it just sit there and got super hot. Well, That's on the drive really to good. me, because they had every light on the dash on, it caught on fire because somebody was putting relay in there. But yeah, get you a good relay tester. I know that one kit. You know, I've got the one that's got the little flip button, and then I've got these that have the test terminal right on. well and, and yeah and those are worth their weight in gold too yeah you you, you can do it either. i don't i like the relay buddy to test mm -hmm. the relay just to make sure but i also like these and these uh you know i think this kit's really good because it's got a bunch of them in there with it um i think that's important because a we can test the relay the relay's good but like you said if it's something causing a relay how many times have we heard relays just sitting there on and off on and off and on and off that's most of the time not the relay it can be but most of the mm -hmm. time it's not um well this one was on a truck and a guy brings it in and he goes i don't know what's going on but i can put a headlight bulb in it and it won't last but a day okay so i start checking the relays bad 
you know, and everybody's like, oh, you should have just throw the relay in there instead of buying it, which I didn't buy it for that. I already had it, but I'm like, yeah, y'all do your stuff your way. I'm going to do it my way. Yeah. Well, uh, two more things, and I promise I'll stop talking about electrical. Uh, probably let Clay <laughs> go because he's got work to do and I got places to be, but um, get you some terminal cleaners. I sell a lot of these. That's important, but guys, remember, if we if we clean the terminals, be careful we don't we don't want to spread them spread out. No pants. And if you do, remember to have that kit to where you can take it out and fix it properly. Fixing it properly is not shoving a screwdriver on the mm -hmm. other side of it and pushing it down. You will break that terminal. Do you pin that bad boy? The the uh, parasitic draw tester that will save you yep. a bunch of time. Those time. are worth their weight and gold. Uh, last thing, I promise. When you get more advanced to in this and you're getting more and more electrical diagnosis, I mean, there's a thousand things in this book. I won't be able to touch everything. But if you want to save you some time and you've got some problems going on, when you can get to where you know you're doing a bunch of electrical, you feel comfortable doing it, you know you're going to stay doing it, some people are going to argue about it. Buy you a good infrared or a, just a heat gun or just mm -hmm. whatever you need. I mean, they sell cheap heat guns. See, I'm a fan of the Load Pro. Yeah. Because how many times have you tested something? Yep, I got 12 volts here, but it can't carry the load. Yeah. Man, them things are invaluable yeah. too. But I like I like an infrared, and the reason I like an infrared for electrical is because most of the time when a relay's going bad or even a coal's going bad mm -hmm. or you've got a short, most of the it's time hot. it causes heat. Mm -hmm. So if I can scan the electrical real quick, like most of the time, I can go straight to it. And if you've ever diagnosed a heat seat cover not working, you will drive yourself absolutely crazy chasing wires when most of the time you can take this little thing and hit it at the seat and see that the wires broke just before it goes into the, the I mean, it's heating up like this much of a section or yeah. something. So, and, and the, the heat gun or well, the- Well, those infrareds are amazing too, like on a big truck. Like you got one that comes in here with a mess and driver's like, I think I got an injector out. And they just pop the hood and go out there and you're like, yep. That so I had, I had the infrared that y'all did the video on. I think y'all did a snap-on comparison and a, mm -hmm. and a Maco. Um, I had one of those on here for a while and it wasn't moving. And it, they are expensive. That's why I'm not telling a new tech to go get one. Because you'd be kind of stupid to, for that to be one of your first choices. Mm -hmm. Some of this stuff's to make your life easier. Yeah. It's not absolutely needed. I still like the digital thermometer. The, 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 the just, hey. That's what I'm saying. A good, a good $30, $30 digital mm -hmm. thermometer, we sell them. I have a lot of people buy those during, uh, when dirt tracks get started up, they'll buy those to check the tires with. Uh, no, not check the tire pressure, check the heat on them. Uh, <laughs> Somebody's somebody, gonna be like, my damn tire pressure's at 84. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but I had one of the infrareds on here for probably six months and everybody really liked it and they just couldn't justify the $1,000 for it. a lot of it. money. But let me tell you, I had a shop owner come out, and he was like, look, I like this thing. I want this thing. But convince me to convince my wife that I need it. So mm. I said, well, let's go in there and see what you've got. And they were doing an alignment on one. So we hit the tire. And, and I said, see the difference in the heat in the tire? Yeah, what's that mean? Different wear. Oh, that's cool. I said, you're not going to use that all the time. But if you've got that stubborn customer that knows his tires are wearing even, this is a quick point. It, yeah. And then he had a misfire. So we shot it at the exhaust manifold. Why is that one super hot? Well, because it's throwing a bunch of fuel to mm -hmm. that. You know, oh, okay. And then, you know, we even shot the coals at that point. Yep, there you go. That coal's deader than all get out. Well, why is it not got no heat? Because it's not firing. You know, and then we went to the next one and it was actually got a noise. Yeah. Uh, well, guess what? We shot the pulleys with the, the thing, and guess what? The one that was bad was four times hotter than everything else. Exactly right. I sold that that day for cash money, like put it in the system. He gave me all the money all at once. I gave him his change out of the cash register, and he went in there confident and says he uses it every week. Does he overuse it? I'm sure. Probably. But but it's his tool. You know what? He wants to with it, right? There would be no other way, and, and if your dealer can't show you that, that's why he's not selling a whole lot of them. And I'm mm -hmm. sure there's a lot out there that can. But, you know, if there's a tool, and, and, I, and I'll and i put this out there, and I y'all may give me so many I can't help everybody, but if there's something that you really want but you can't justify it, shoot me a message. 
on my Facebook page, and I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. Realize I've got a life outside of, you know, <laughs> this. I mean, I do have three kids, and I do have a lot of other stuff going on. Um, but shoot me a message, and I'll try to tell you what the advantages of it. Now, don't be shocked if I tell you don't buy it. Yeah. Because I'm not going to lie to you. I don't care if it's got Maco on it. If I don't think mm. you need it for what you're doing, I'm going to tell you, you know, hey, that's not, you know, I, I gripe about it at the tractor rental place and stuff like that. But uh, if you know how to use it, then that's fine. But if, if you're wanting to buy, you know, a test probe to check fuel mileage, then I'm going to tell you that's just not what you, exactly. you know. So if, if you got a question, shoot me some ideas for videos. Uh, I know we talk about a lot of other stuff on here, but if, if you want to hear more about tools, give me some ideas because I talk tools every day, mm -hmm. all day. Clay has 14 trucks come up here, not 14, but you know, so we talk tools all the time. So, um, and I'm not sick, by the way. I, I did see somebody ask if I had lost weight. Yes, I lost weight. Uh, it's on purpose. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not, I, I am stressed, but that's not the reason. I promise yeah. you. I, well, uh, how's, how's mom doing? Well, let me start off with thanking everybody for the prayers and the comments and everything. She's doing better than I've seen her probably in a year. Um, Good. That's I great. didn't, you know, when when you go down over time, you don't realize how how mm -hmm. it's happening. Yeah, it's um, so slow. Usually. But I, I'm gonna tell you, I hadn't seen my mom stay outside longer than five or ten minutes in a year, and the last couple of weeks, or since that's happened, I guess a week, I guess it feels like it happened a couple of weeks ago, but. Uh, I guess the last week, every time I go over, she's outside on the front porch. You know, before it was just too hot outside; she couldn't breathe. You yeah. know, it was, uh, and we burn all the boxes if the stuff comes in, and she, you know, she couldn't come out there because she couldn't breathe because of the smoke. She couldn't breathe because of the heat. She couldn't breathe. She just couldn't breathe. And, and come to find out, it was all related to that blockage. So um, I've seen her outside more. She's, I don't know, her color's better than I've seen in a year. That's I honestly awesome. feel like that she's, and they keep telling her that she's going to be better than she's felt in a long time. So That's good, man. I mean, there's a lot of doctor's appointments, and by no means is she out of the woods, I don't think. I mean. Hey, as long as she's making progress, that means it's easier to take that next step. You know, you know? Um, we told her, I would love to have Leslie on here now, but we told her to take her time. And mm -hmm. uh, she was kind of disappointed because the doctor told her three more weeks before she could do anything like that. But she's feeling a lot better, so That's good. we just keep letting it happen. Thank everybody. Um, I'm gonna let Clay go now because <laughs> we don't make money off the videos. So, all right, guys. Like always, thank y'all for hanging out with us. If you liked the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Check over merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes over here. If you're not subscribed, take your finger and click that button. You guys have a great weekend, and we will catch you later. See ya.